Hey everyone, here doing a box opening of Theros, the newest Magic the Gathering set. We currently have it on our website right now for $99.99. Very eager, very excited. The set is based around Greek mythology. Um, a lot of people I know are getting into the game just because of that. And they are introducing a whole host of new game mechanics and new card types. So, seems like a really exciting set. I'm um, going to open up the entire box, and I'm going to have a review of all those cards that we opened up at the end of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us below and like our videos. We'd really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get started. So... I also uh, went to the pre-release for this set. I did okay, but uh, pulled some of the uh, enchantment gods, which was really cool. So um, I hope you can see the cards in the video um, down below. So uh, this should work out. Uh, Omen Speaker, Grey Merchant, Divine Verdict, Sip of Hemlock, Destroy Card Creature, Traveler's Amulet. It's pretty nice artwork. A Crone Crusader, Titan Strength, which is a very nice card. It's an instant, costs one red. Target creature gets plus three, plus one until in a turn, scry for one. So that is amazing. It's amazing. Baleful Ilden, one of the enchantment creatures, which kind of act like artifact creatures, only the enchantments instead. So that's kind of cool. Tinsoro, Alan's Emissary. Fantic of Morgus. Swain Song is the rare. And yeah. Yeah, the enchant creatures. Um, I think they're gonna be a lot of fun. I have have it I actually have an enchantment modern deck. Let's see, look, there's another one. Uh, the only problem is, is that the cost to bestow, which allows them to come in as the enchantment award. Uh, it's just so expensive. I don't th think you'll see much standard play, but uh, it's still really nice. Now, this Aquatus form is also really good, too. Enchanted creature, enchanted creature can't be blocked, and whenever it attacks, you scry for one. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, see, now, the, the nice thing they did do... Oh, hello. Monstrosity, another new game mechanic. Very fun. You activate it, they become monstrous, and... I've been about a bang. Um... Psychic Intrusion. Alright. Yeah, uh, Monstrosity, though, you can only do it once, but you can do it at any time. And um, you get a really big creature and usually get some other extra ability. So there's some really good Monstrosity ones. Um, I think they're better than what they did with Bestow, Powerhouse Rise. So, Viper's Kiss, Voyager's End, Staunch Heated Warrior. Let's see, yeah. Another Titan Strength, very nice. A Crone Hapolite, which is a very fun one. It's a two drop. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn where X is the number of attacking creatures you control. I mean, why not? Um, Ordeal of Phosius, Time Fortune Hunter, and Spear of Hellard. This one is really nice. Creatures you control get plus one plus one, and you can tap three in itself to destroy a target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. It only costs three. Now, it's a legendary enchantment artifact, so if there's something that could destroy target enchantment or target artifact, um, it'll be targetable. But uh, still, though, I mean, there's a lot of three drop enchantments that give your creatures uh, plus one, plus one, but they usually have speculations on them. This one doesn't. So, that is really good. And again, we have these boxes on sale right now for $99.99 on our website, collectorstore.com. Use the coupon code FREESHIP to get free shipping. So, these cards are really nice. See, fade into Ed Decree, Exile, Target Artifact, or Enchantment. So, that's to fight against the gods, who are all indestructible. Another one. Rescue from the Underworlds, fun. MSA, and nice! Athona the Cool, Legendary Creature Gorgon, 
four colorless, two swamps. Um, she's a four six with death touch. And you can tap six colorless, two swamps, monstrosity a three. And when she becomes monstrous, you destroy all non Gorgon creatures. So, unless you're building a straight Gorgon deck, um, basically that means you're just going to destroy everything but her. Oh, and a Dragon Mantle. Foil. Nice. That's a really fun one. I mean, a one drop enchantment that just says draw a card and it gives um, fire breathing. It's really good. Um, it's only a common, too. Alright, let's see here. Okay, move that a little closer. There we go. Another one when it's battlefield draw a card, enchant land is every basic land type in addition to its other types. That's ridiculous. I didn't see that card during the pre-release. So basically you use that and um, there's a modern deck that plays a whole bunch of different cards that says, you know, deal one damage for every basic land type among lands you control and things like that. Um, so cards like that could be easily powered up. Um, of course, uh, the deck doesn't really need that because it plays so many of the shock lands. But still, it's a cheap way to do it. Exile target white permanent. That's nasty in mirror matches. Destructive rivalry, shipwreck, singer, and Nelia, god of the hunt, second mythic. So three colorless, one green, legendary enchantment creature god, indestructible. As long as you have devotion to green as less than five, it isn't a creature. So if you have five or more cards with the four symbol and its mana cost among the permanents you control, she does become a creature. Other creatures you have you control have trample, and you can tap three colorless and a green to give target creature plus two plus two, which is pretty terrible. But the fact it gives all your creatures into all gives all your creatures trample, and she can become a six six. It's pretty good. So, and she's only a four drop too. I mean, see the problem with the gods is that there are enchantments out there that give the same bonuses that they give, and they're slightly cheaper. But the reason why they also good is first of all, it's indestructible, so they can't just pop it off the field, and also they can obviously become creatures. So. Now, Mag Magma Jet is a really good burn card. It's a uh, two cost, deals two damage to target creature player, then scry for two. So, this is going to see a lot of play. So, if you get these, you might want to hold on to them. Raptor and Adept. And Colossus of Akros. Minotaur Skull Cleaver, not bad. Yeah, the Minotaurs uh, saw a lot of play during the pre-release. Um, they did really well. It was almost like sliverish. I mean, that's bad. Okay, I have no idea why they made this rare. Flame Cast Real. It's a one-drop artifact. This is tap five itself. Sacrifice. Deal three damage to target creature. Why? Just why? Thought seize. Yes, the old fifty-dollar one. Oh, and. Marauder foil. That's great. But the Thought Seize, yeah, a lot of people were mad when this got reprinted. But for people like us who don't have any, it's a good thing. So, I feel your pain, those who had one. I played Yu Gi Oh! for a very long time, and that's all they used to do is reprint valuable cards. So, I know the pain. But I want them cheaper, so, works out for me. And it can work out for you too. Just have to buy a box. You'll get one. It's worth it. And Mythic Mythic. Hello, God of the Sun. He's the, uh, again, three colors, one planes. Legendary enchantment creature god. He's indestructible. Devotion of five or le devotion less than five. He isn't a creature. Um, other creatures you control have vigilance, which is nice. But then two colors, two planes. Put a 2 1 white cleric enchantment creature token onto the battlefield. And he's a 5 6. So when he becomes a creature, he's not as powerful as the green, but he has just as much defense. Um, which doesn't mean much since it's indestructible. The Vigilance is nice. Um, it's very nice. Uh, 
but I like the idea where if I have leftover mana, I could just start producing creature tokens. Um, it's also great if you're needing to play defense. So, a lot of enchantments in this one. Well, that's interesting. Fate foretold. Enters the battlefield, draw a card. When the enchanted creature dies, draw a card. That's interesting. Ordeal of Fierce, I think, is really cool. It's one of those enchantments where every time the creature attacks, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. And when it has three or more plus one, plus ones, sacrifice it. Then you can sacrifice this card to draw two cards. So. Now, one thing about these enchantments, because there's one for each color, is the Return to Remnica block is still legal right now. So you can combine this with the Unleash ability, and they'll start off with a plus one, plus one counter. Then all you have to do is attack twice, and you'll get the ability off. It said three times. So, very nice. The two target creatures each get plus two, plus two until on turn, which is nice. And, ah, Shrine to Nyx. Yes. It's, this land right now, um, I don't think it's worth that much. Uh, I'm going to look up the prices of all these cards afterwards. But I think it's got a lot of potential. It's tap it to produce one colorless. And then you can um, tap two in itself, choose a color, and then you get mana in your mana pool equal to the devotion you have of the chosen color. Um, I think someday it's going to be worth a lot um, because all you need is devotion of three and you're already breaking even. And, um, oh, try it of fates. All you need is uh, devotion of three and you're already breaking even. Um, devotion of four or more. And making profit. So late game is extremely powerful. Early game not so much, but it can still produce colorless mana and it comes into play untapped. Really good. Destroy target black creature. Yeah, I'd rather rather have a white one. Ah Rip of Erebos. Another legendary enchantment artifact. Creatures you control have lifelink. And you can tap Two colorless, two swamps, tap it, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile instead. And activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. And normally costs two colorless and two swamps to play. So that one's really cool. Black definitely needed lifelink. Um, I just built a black modern, uh, I'm sorry, black commander deck. And all it does is eat away my life. And there's nothing I can do to gain it back, because black doesn't have much lifelink in it. Um, so, except when you siphon it from other players. But something that just gives all your stuff um, lifelink, I mean, for black, that's good enough as is, let alone you can also revive your creatures. So, it's really good. And Artesian of Forms. Artisan of Forms. Yeah. Strength again. Gorgon. See, you can build a Gorgon deck. It's a weaker version of Gorgon, actually. Because whenever it becomes monstrous, destroy target non Gorgon creature. Kind of, okay, Dissolve has replace, cancel forever. So it's counter target spell scry one. I mean, why would I ever want to play cancel again? It costs the exact same mana cost, everything's the same. Cancel is no more. Solve is the way to go. Ooh, Foil Mythic. Foil Mythic. Meeting in the Ageless. Nice. This card is definitely not appreciated enough, I think. It's four colorless, one planes, one island, flying legendary creature Sphinx. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, take an extra turn after this one. And he can't attack during extra turns. And he's a 4 4. So. That that card's amazing. It's nice to actually see a good Sphinx for once. Um, I think there's only one or two other decent Sphinx out there. They're usually just so expensive and they never give anything to their abilities. Um, it's nice to see a good Sphinx creature. Message of Speed. 
God's willing. Major poisons. Spark Jolt deals one damage to our creature play, then Squire one. That's so good. So I'll talk creature with power two or less. Controller gains four life. Eh. Messias of Mortals. It's like a ghoul tree for monstrosity, basically. So if you don't know what ghoul tree is, um, you'll see it in, uh, I think it's Dark Ascension. So Warrior's Lesson and Boon Satire. Oh, oh another foil. Pegol of Helloid. So. Wow, that's expensive. Uh, it's a four colors, two planes. When he enters the battlefield, put number one one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to white. So you get at least two, but that's not worth six. I have no idea why that's so expensive. Maybe there's something coming out in the next two sets. That's gonna make devotion amazing. I could see them coming out with something like that. Something like an enchantment that says, add to devotion of any color um, that you name when it enters the battlefield or something. So that way one thing can have a lot of devotion to it. Or they'll come out with stuff that costs like four white something. Ah, the World Eater. Um, if you haven't seen this card yet from the uh, Heroes vs. Monsters decks, it's a uh, two colorless, two green, legendary creature Hydra costs double X and a green for monstrosity of X. And when he becomes monstrosities, it deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures your opponents control. Each of those creatures deals damage equal to its power to him. So when you play him, you'll be able to pay at least monstrosity of one, deal one damage as, as you choose. Yeah, that's not that great. But the fact is, is that he's a four drop five five. That could become bigger. So, that's the real point. So, so let's see. Uh, chosen, Wall, Hibiscus, Lightning Strike. Because we need more two cost deal three damage cards. And, Reverend Hunter. Reverend Hunter. Okay. Into the battlefield, he gets plus one, plus one counters. So. That's nice, I guess. Okay. Let's just speed. Read the bones. Read the chicken bones, Yugi. Sphinx of Pandormia. One colorless tap. Each player exiles the top card of his or her library face down. Seven colorless and tap. Sacrifice it. Each player turns face up all cards they own that was exiled. Then puts those permanent cards among them onto the battlefield. Because, you know, if I'm paying, you know, seven mana, I definitely want to help out my opponent. Do not want to just for myself. Oh, and it's a foil. It's a foil land. Oh. Another Dragon Mantle, ass. Another Bronze. Battle Priest, she's fine, I guess. Death Bell Raider. Eh, two drop, two three. It's not bad. I mean, it's basically a Termogorf with two types in the graveyards, and he has the ability to regenerate. Woo, yay. Um, big Manator guy. My mantras gain haste when they attack it gets plus two plus zero. So he was a big stuff big staple in the Manator decks during the pre-release. And Rage Blood Shaman, another Manator. One colorless, two mountains, trample, two, three. Other Manator creatures you control get plus one plus one half trample. That's really nice. You could build a good Manator deck with that card. It's only a three drop. It's a shame he doesn't boost himself, but still though. That's not bad. Uh, 
turn up to three target creatures your opponent's control to the owner's hand, scry one for six. Yeah, maybe late game. Prognostic Sphinx. You can discard a card to give it hexproof till in a turn and then tap it, and whenever he attacks, you can describe for three. Huh. At least you can give him hexproof. Don't like the idea of having a discard a card to do it, but I guess you can always discard a land if it's that late game and you don't need it. Crackling Trident, Spark Jolt, Last Breath. Chronicle of Heroes. Oh, that's cool. It's a 3-3-3 three, three, three drop, and when he enters the battlefield, draw a card if you control a creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. It's not bad. Dissolve. Trident Tactics, and Shipbreaker Kraken. One of the pre-release cards. Alright, let's see here. Lost in the Labyrinth. Yeah. That should be a card in the Dragon's Maze. Lost in the Labyrinth. Psychic Intrusion. Second one. So I think so far I've pulled three methods. Two of the gods and then the foil one. So hopefully we'll see more. We're halfway through the box, so. Unknown Shores. Never really understood why they reprint card effects that are exactly the same. Oh, Curse of the Shrine. Yes, that's a good one. Two islands and X. Exile X target creatures for each creature exiled this way. Its control gets a 2 2 board creature token onto the battlefield. Which is really good flavored. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Um, and uh, to, the, to the Greek mythology. But what's so great about this is you can tap three and exile target creature. I mean, that's kind of expensive compared to, I don't know, Tragic Slip, I guess, which, I mean, only costs one. But the point is, is that you can tap four and do it to two creatures. Tap five, do it to three creatures. I mean, we just saw a common earlier. That's a tap three, we turn them to your, or tap six, we turn three creatures to your opponent's hands and scry for one. Or you can play that card and exile four of the creatures. And it's up to four, too. I mean, you could just pay less if you want to. So, it's a really versatile card. I think it's going to be really good. Back on another foil planes. Watch of the Returned. Game of the Gods. Game of the Gods is a pretty fun one. Another Magma Jet. Is he from the Underworld? And... Temple of Mystery! It's one of the new dual land rares. Lands. Um, enters the battlefield tapped. When enters the battlefield, you get a scry for one. And you can tap it to add a blue or green to your mana pool. Um, yeah, so it's a gate that allows you to scry. For one. I mean, it's nice. I don't know how valuable it's really going to be. It's probably going to end up being worth a lot for some reason, but I just, I think scrying is really good, but I just don't think it's worth being a rare if you put that ability on a uh, gate. So, I put it Overlord. Um, Maybe if it didn't come into play tapped, that would be amazing. Um, or more conveniently, if it scryed for two, that'd be really good. Uh, they did try doing a scry lands before, but they were monocolored, and it didn't go over very well. Um, so, it's interesting that they're trying that again. Oh, the Murder King. This is a fun card. My deck for standard is actually going to be uh, black red now, um, so I was kind of looking forward to this card a little. Um, the main point is that um, you can sacrifice another creature, um, and he deals two damage to target player, or you can sacrifice a creature and return it from the graveyard to your hand. 
So, and he's only a two drop, two, two, legendary creature, zombie warrior. His ability isn't game ending, but I think, um, I think it's fun that he, he can revive himself from the graveyard, so. Little Tempered Cyclops, chosen by Harold. Hippo Camp. Okay. And yeah, Temple of Mystery again. Okay. Come on, we need some more mythics here. Let's go. Cycle, Lash of the Whip, Way of Dissolution. Dissolution. Destroy target enchantment, you gain three life. Titan Strength, Traveling Philosophers, Vakrushin, the Foul. See, look at that. Six drop sorcery, target, destroy target creature with power for a greater scry for one. Or tap two islands in a colorless and exile it. Which one do you want? And Temple of Deceit. It's the black-blue scry land. Yeah, though. Um, people will definitely have to use the scry lands for uh, the multicolor decks. I mean, there's no reason why not to, I think. Um, unless you really want just to um, play the basic lands and but it's just going to be a lot more consistent. Um, it's definitely going to slow down the format, though. Ah, Fable Tier. Um, it's definitely going to slow down the format a lot because I can play tapped. Packs I have left. I have six packs left. Uh, I've only pulled, I think, three mythics, so I need more mythics. Watch the return. Lightning Strike. Another enchant creature. Another enchantment creature. A lot of enchantment creatures here. Uh, wow. That is the face of a troll. Right there. Um, no idea why they made this card. The only thing I can think of is you combine it with the Tyrant King, that zombie warrior guy that allows you to sacrifice creatures. I mean, he's a cheap, one costing, two one, but the problem is, is whenever he's dealt damage, he deals that much damage to you, so you can't block with him. I mean, if you block with him, you're just going to take the damage anyway. And then you can tap a colorless and one, and he gets plus one plus zero till in a turn, but he deals one damage to you. So I guess he's a good finisher if you're in the lead by life points. I I mean, I'm going to try to run him in my red black deck, because my red black deck is going to be all about speed and control. And he's really great for that. Um, that's really all I can think of. I have no idea what he's worth right now. I would imagine it'd be one of those 50 cent cards, but, um, or at least he'll become that. Is that already? There's the other mythic. Erbos, God of the Dead. He's, again, four costing overall, legendary enchantment creature god, indestructible, devotion to black is less than five, he isn't a creature. Your opponents can't gain life, and you can tap one colorless and one swamp, pay two life to draw a card. He's a 5-7. So he has better stats than the white god, which is a 5-6. I think he has a way better ability. And, um, I mean, his, his artifact um, card goes perfectly with him. Because um, you're, you're gaining life, and meanwhile, you're paying life to keep drawing cards. And he's just really good overall. Oh, you have uh, two mana left over for the turn? You can draw a card. So, I just think he's really good. Traveling Philosophers again. Yeah, and the flavor text in this game, I haven't had a chance to read them yet, but I'm literally looking forward to reading them. Um, Hero's Downfall. Nice. Oh, and a foil psychic intrusion. That's the third one now. But um, uh, so they put a lot of effort into the flavor text because they try to relate it so much to the Greek mythology. So there's some flavor text in here that's real world flavor text. Um, 
and it's literally from mythology. So definitely look forward to that. So try a Rumbler two one with trample. Chain to the rocks. Chant a mountain you control when it enters the battlefield. Exile target creature and opponent controls until chain to the rocks leaves the battlefield. So it's a one drop fiend hunter, but you have to play it in a deck with mountains. Yeah. So Boros decks, your luck. Um, it's a really good card. It's just you have to play mountains with it. Which is interesting. I wonder if they're going to do more cards like that where it benefits specific decks um, that are um, multicolored in a particular way. So. And Bo Anelia. Attacking creatures you control up Death Touch. You can tap one colors in a forest, tap it, choose one, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Or this card deals two damage to target creature with flying, or you gain three life, or put up to four target cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order. So, and then it's a three drop. So, sure. I don't mind attacking and giving my creatures death touch. You know. And the plus one plus one kind of thing's nice. Go with the other enchantments. Um the the paths. It's paths or the chosen, I can't remember. Underworld, MSA is a fun card, and Temple of Abandon. Um, it's a it's the green red version of the Skylands. So last pack. Okay. Let's see, uh, what am I hoping for? What am I hoping for? I'm hoping for a foil god. Maybe the foil blue one. I like the blue ones. It allows you to scry one at the beginning of each of your turns. Faith told ordeal. That's what they're called. Ordeals. Plus one, plus one counter enchantments. Eyes and Chimera. And NX and Simedi, whatever. I can't pronounce the name. And any foils? Nope. Oh well. Okay, so stay tuned for the recap video. And uh, make sure you subscribe to us, like us, click the buttons below. You know you want to. Um, and we'll be seeing a recap with the prices of these cards. So, see you soon. Hey everyone, this is just a recap video of the box I just opened. So, if you watched the whole thing, th thanks for tuning in and watching it all. Um, if you haven't, uh, it was a pretty decent pool. Um, these are just kind of the more basic things I pulled. It's like a contrusion. Pulls kind of contrusion of forms. Um, these ones I looked up on TCG Player. They're going for less than a dollar. Um, or at least we're going to be selling them in our store for a dollar or less. Um, so not much to really show off. Um, I did also look up my uh, Magma Jets. Um, it's only an uncommon, but it's still going for uh, a little bit more than a dollar. So we're going to be selling those for a dollar a piece. That's really nice. So now we're getting into the bigger things here. Um, Bo of Nelia. Um, now, uh, TCG Player, they have these for a little bit more than our sticker price. But again, this is just how much we're going to be selling them for because we like to be cheaper than online. Sadly, we do not sell our uh, singles online, not yet at least, but if you live in the St. Charles, St. Louis, Missouri area, um, stop by our shop. And just a reminder, these boxes are on sale right now for $99.99 with free shipping. Just use the promo card free ship, or uh, the, the uh, coupon code free ship. I was really surprised that the spear was only two dollars. Um, the whip, however, is three, which makes more sense. 
of your creature's life link. Swan Song, I was kind of surprised to see going for about three dollars. Hero's Downfall, the murder card that also can destroy planeswalkers. I really like that card. I'm kind of surprised it was for three. This one's the Scrylands. Um, this is the uh, blue-green Scryland. Got two of them actually. So here's the uh, red-green version. I was really surprised to see this one still going for five, even though it was printed in the Heroes vs. Monsters. Shrine to Nix, six dollars. Not too bad. I still think it'll go up someday, but see. God of the Hunt, it's only seven. I think it's the cheapest out of the gods. Hildo, son of the God of the Sun, it's only nine. God of the Dead, who I think has a better ability, but also nine dollars. So now this one is the Ageless. It's twelve dollars only because it's a foil. Otherwise, it would have been about three. Shiny makes a difference. And then Thoughtseize was the big card out of the box, twenty dollars. The original print one's going between thirty-five and forty, so very nice. So. Overall, not counting those miscellaneous ones, just the sticker prices, that box brought in $105. So we made our money back, plus all the commons and everything else. So, definitely a good buy. Um, but, we decided to go ahead and open up another one. So, these are some of the other ones we pulled. Um, this I did not show in the first part of the video. But, uh, we wanted to open up two boxes of this set, because I think it's so amazing. So, it's kind of a extra bonus. Uh, these are, again, all the ones that are a dollar less. Um, not the best cards in the world. That one is actually for about a dollar fifty, but we're just going to sell it for a dollar. Again, I have no idea why it goes for that much. Psychic Intrusion. Okay, so let's get to the sticker prices. Steam Augury, which is like a fact of fiction for the Izzet Guild. Very nice. We got another Spear. Boon Satire, which isn't actually as bad as I thought it was. The Bestow is kind of useless, but the fact that it has Flash, it's a 4-2 and costs 3 to drop. Pretty nice. Chain to the Rocks. A one drop Fiend Hunter. Or you, uh, yeah, Swan Song. Then another Hero's Downfall. Now, someone please explain to me Soldier the Python. It's a one drop, but it's a 2 1 with an amazing ability. Meanwhile, you have this guy who's also a one drop, 2 1, and his abilities are awful. But they're both rares. And the soldier actually kind of makes sense. I don't understand the other thing. Anger, anger of the Gods, $3. Not too bad. Ashen Rider, $3. Um, I guess because the end of the battlefield ability makes it pretty decent, but it's so much to play. Eight. It's good for Commander, probably, but I don't know about Standard. Whip. Temple of the Deceit, it's the blue-black Scryland. Now this card's really amazing, I was kind of surprised it's only four dollars. It's a Utopia tree um, with Hexproof, and it has a one additional strength, so it's really a good card. It's only four dollars right now, so. Now this uh, Scryland's actually worth more, uh, it's the white-black one. Not quite sure why it's so much more, but... Now this card's really amazing. Get the monstrosity out, and you have a 4-4 hexproof indestructible. It's really good. Shrine, again. God of the Sun. And this one's pretty impressive. God of the Sea, $15. 
right now. Fleece line, foil version. And then Thought Seize, so we have two of them now. But the really big card is the Red God. It's the most valuable at $21. He, so definitely want to try to pull him if you can. His ability is amazing. So um, not only does he have high attack strength but uh, if he ever becomes a creature, but he be deals two damage to each opponent every time you play a creature. And uh, creatures you can give any creature fire breathing. So really amazing card. So... Um, the sticker price for that box added up to $135. So two boxes, both of them earned us more than $100, and that's just with those that were individually priced up, let alone all these other ones and all the commons and uncommons. So make sure you check us out, collectorstore.com. Um, check us out on Facebook. Check out our other YouTube videos. Um, we got it on sale again for $99.99. Make sure you subscribe, like us, and um, don't miss out on this opportunity. All right, see ya.